begin the initial outline form at the center of the lingual surface of the tooth. Then, a pre-operative photograph was taken prior to the preparation. This is to determine the shape and the size of the canal. A small round burr is used to penetrate in the enamel at an angle perpendicular to the surface of the tooth. Penetrate into the dentin approximately 1 mm to form the initial excess cavity. A sectional view was made to show the angle of the round burr that is perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. Be careful to not penetrate beyond the pop chamber as this will perforate the dentinal wall. You can use the DG16 to locate the initial cavity. By using the same round burr, penetrate the tooth until the pop chamber is reached. Then, air blow the cavity and use a DG16 or an endodontic explorer to locate the canal orifice. The angle of the penetration for the initial entry into the pop chamber is nearly parallel to the long axis of the root. A sectional view was made to show the angle of the round burr that is parallel to the long axis of the root. Then, use gate screed in size 2 or 3 to remove the pulpal roof. In the sectional view, we can clearly see that the gate sclidin will also remove the lingual shoulder. After using gate sclidin or any rotary instruments, you must always irrigate the canal using sodium hypochlorite. Then, Gate skidin size 2 or 3 was used to remove the coronal dentin and also to enlarge the axial walls. The axial walls should be smooth and flared to ensure that no coronal dentin will interfere with the straight line access for instrumentation. After that, Use an endo Z or a non cutting end burr to refine the excess cavity to the desired triangular shape. This step was also done to ease the obturation procedure after the excess cavity has been made. The sectional view clearly shows the angle of the endozebra refining and enlarging the triangular outline and the lingual shoulder of the pop chamber. Note that the most coronal aspect of the axial walls should be flat towards the occlusal surface in order to ensure good resistance form for temporary restoration and flexibility of obturation.
Then, you can use the DG16 probe or an endodontic explorer to identify the canal and also to locate the orifice. You can also check if the axial walls are smooth and flat towards the occlusal surface. Make sure that there is a straight line excess cavity when enter into the pop chamber. Then, you can use the smaller scale file, which is size 10 or 15, to also explore the canal. Insert the K file thoroughly into the pop chamber. And now, the excess cavity preparation from maxillary central incisor is finally completed.